Hey guys, Laura here. How are y'all doing? I'm going to go through a Leaving Cert history essay with you today from the 2015 paper. It's from the dictatorship and democracy topic and the question about Mussolini and Stalin's use of terror and propaganda. Now you can see there in front of you guys the different sections that I'm going to analyse this essay under. So I do recommend you have a quick read of the entire essay before we make a start. It would make it all a, li a little bit clearer for you as I start to tear it down. You will be able to find the full essay analysed on Study Clicks later on, but just for today, I think it would be good to just dip in and dip out of different parts and a couple of paragraphs to highlight the things that I want to make clear to you. So let's get into it. Firstly, let's look at the actual question. I want you to be happy with the choice you make on your Leave Insert History paper. So here are some things to keep an eye out for and to make sure that you do all of these things because, you know, they, they are what the examiner is looking for. So straight away, it's clear to you here that you have a choice to make in relation to this essay. Are you going to talk about Mussolini and Stalin or are you just going to talk about one of them? Now, the sample answer that we're going to look at today is just about Stalin. And I think that that's a smart choice. In general, I think there is more detail on Stalin's use of terror and propaganda as it kind of incorporates a case study. So in general, I think you're going to have more to say about Stalin. But, you know, you make your own choice, but just make sure that you do make your choice and make it clear to the examiner. And then make sure you're covering both parts of the question. Here you have to talk about propaganda and terror. You don't have to speak about them 50-50, but you do have to speak about both. And the marking scheme would back me up on that. Now, remember, your history essay isn't just about throwing down everything you know about a particular topic. You have to make sure that you are referring to the question that's asked on the day. So in this instance, I would advise you to keep referring back to the word remain. So the common mistake that kids will make is they will talk about everything that Stalin did in relation to propaganda and everything he did in relation to terror, but then not make the link with how all of that stuff that he did allowed him to remain in power or helped him to remain in power. Do you get what I mean? So if you keep referring back to that word or something similar to that word, then you are dealing with the question and not just putting down everything you know. To make that a little bit clearer for you, on the marking scheme, here's a couple of things to think about, a couple of things to spot. Before the examiners are sent off with your essays to correct guys for your leaving search, they're told to specifically look at how the candidate, that's you, how the candidate treats the set question. Are they answering the question that was asked of them on the day? Or are they simply answering the question that they thought was asked or that they wished was asked? Or are they just putting down all of the information that they know about, let's say, Stalin? But are they are they not focusing it accurately enough on what was asked on the day? And on top of that is what they've put down accurate and substantial. And you will see some excellent examples of that in this particular essay. So keep those two things in your mind, guys, as you're writing your own essays, looking back over your own essays and looking at sample answers. Are they dealing with the question that was asked on the day and is the information accurate and substantial? So, for example, the introduction for this essay does cover pretty much nearly all of the boxes that I've kind of mentioned already. It does use lovely expression and language skills. There is a certain amount of your English essay writing skills that come into play here, guys. And this is a good example of how somebody puts all of the information they have in their head together in a nice, cohesive way. Keep an eye out for that. Sometimes a history essay can be a bit bullet pointy, if you know what I mean. This essay is a good example of, of not being like that. However, I would love if this intro gave a tiny bit more context of the battle that Stalin went through in defeating Trotsky in particular, because it would help set the scene about how kind of propaganda and terror and lies and all of these things were being used by Stalin from the get go. So, of course, he was going to continue using them. And, you know, it would just, I feel, give a bit more background to this particular scene. I love the way intros end with a rephrasing of the set question. It's clear to me now there was a choice to be made in this essay as I've spoken about. This person has made their choice. They've said, This essay aims to explore the ways in which Stalin used terror and propaganda during his time as leader of the Soviet Union. So I know now exactly what this person has chosen to write about and what they've said they're going to write about. So now I need to make sure that they do write about it. So a very good introduction in general. 
The paragraphs in general do continue along that high quality. A couple of tiny things I'm going to point out, but some of the good stuff. For example, straight away paragraph one implies awareness of the question. They start off with Stalin relied on propaganda to maintain a firm control over the country. That's just another way of saying that he relied on propaganda to remain in power. You know, so you can find your own language and your own way to pepper in your references to the question. And that's a great example of that. And then the other thing, of course, is that all of that substantial information. Well, in this paragraph, they have loads of relevant and substantial and specific examples of the propaganda tools and techniques that Stalin used to remain in power. Remember I said there's a couple of tiny things I'd like to improve on here. These paragraphs could be really easily linked. Remember, your history essays should have a kind of a thread running through them. So for example, the second paragraph here could start off with, similarly, propaganda was used to ensure that Stalin's blah, blah, blah. So there, all of a sudden, you have linked your paragraphs seamlessly. Keep an eye out for that. But again, very, very, very extensive knowledge. So I've moved on good paragraphing skills here. I talked about propaganda and now I'm talking about the economy and then some really extensive knowledge on what Stalin did in relation to the economy. Lovely stuff. Across the, this paragraph, then, they have certain sentences and phrases that kind of imply awareness of the question. And I just feel that it could be a little bit more explicit rather than implicit. For example, I'd love if they could refer specifically to the question. Do you see there where they say, however, his success was a setup? So you could have, however, his success was a setup. He was using lies and propaganda to remain in power. The final sentence, Russia was growing and thriving while the rest of the world was going through the Great Depression. Stalin had successfully used propaganda to help remain in power. You know, now I don't recommend you use the same phrases over and over again. You can find your own language and your own way. But just a little bit more explicit reference to the question would be really, really excellent there. Similar enough things to be said, guys, about paragraphs seven and eight down the essay a little bit. But when they're talking about these things, it does lend itself to a very seamless linking. And, you know, obviously talking about the first show trial and then the second and then the third means that you are speaking things in the correct chronological order. So just nice little linking phrases there, which I like to see. Linking back to the set question would again hammer this paragraph home really well. Looking at the second example that I've highlighted there, Yagoda's execution was particularly brutal. He was stripped naked, beaten and shot. This is a prime example of how Stalin was using terror and propaganda to ensure there was nobody there to go against him and therefore he would remain in power. You know, you could just hammer that home and just make it that little bit, that little bit clearer. In the second paragraph here, the writer does display good analytical skills and awareness of the question. Remember, you're not just putting down everything you know, you are then required to look at everything you have put down and analyse it, scrutinise it, give an opinion, make a argument about all of this stuff. What was it good for? What was it bad for? What was the effect of it? What was the result of it? So there's a lovely simple example of it there, thus protecting his public image, you know. Stalin had done all of these things and the effect was he had protected his public image. Nice, simple way of analysing, you know, what, what had happened. The end of this paragraph ends on a quote and I quotes are lovely. They help back up your argument, you know, using words from documents of the time, speeches from the time, posters of the time, any of those things are a lovely use of evidence to help back up your argument and whatever you're trying to say about the specific set question on the day. Moving on finally to the last part of the essay, which is obviously the conclusion. Now, your conclusion, remember, has to sum up everything you've said, analyse what happened and place it all in the wider context. And if you can do all of those things, you are going to finish your essay really strong and leave a really good impression on the examiner. Does this conclusion do that? And it, it does nearly everything. It does summarise the arguments that I have made on the previous pages. It does give an analysis of his actions and it does use the words of the set question, which is lovely. I'm nitpicking a little bit, but I would love if this conclusion gave a little bit more detail on the long lasting effects of all of this. And that would help place it all in the wider context a little bit.
moving into World War Two and the Cold War, for example, the Red Army was particularly weakened um, at the start of World War Two. And that was kind of Stalin's fault because he had killed off a lot of the generals and the kind of higher ups in the army because they had control of the army, obviously, and they could have posed a serious threat to Stalin and to Stalin's power. So his use of terror in that instance left the Soviet Union in a pretty weakened state. And I just think that this conclusion could make that a bit clearer and place all of Stalin's actions in that wider context and how he had left Russia in a very tough position in terms of recovery and development in World War II and indeed after World War II and the Cold War. So just a couple of sentences on that would be really, really, really fantastic. So that brings me to the end, guys, today for my analysis of this particular essay. Don't forget you can find the full essay analysed on StudyClicks. And I hope to talk to you all again. Bye bye.